Hello, this is Joe Neville. How's it going? I'm back with another Aruba AOS CX video. In our last video, we built a layer three network, but we broke my end-to-end -end connectivity between my Ubuntu servers. So in this video, we're going to fix it. And because this is a basics series, we're gonna fix it in the most basic way possible. And that's with static routes. We'll run through the steps via a slideshow first, and then I'll jump onto the CLIs and I will configure this and get our end-to-end -end working again. Here's our network then. So we have two, let me grab my uh, futuristic laser pointer. So we have two Ubuntu servers and we've got three subnets. So it's 192, V4 only, I'm afraid for this. We have over here 192.168.150.0 slash 24. Then we've got this slash 30 here between our two CX devices. That's 192.168.150. 151 and then over here we have 192.168.152 and that's a slash 24. Okay, so how do we route across this network? Now, when I was learning routing, what I was taught is always try to think from the point of view of the device on the network. Try to be the router. Put yourself in its shoes and think about what it can see of the network. That allows you to break down routing problems. Oh, and because this is basics, I should mention everything is just in the default VRF here. We will move on to VRFs in a future video. Okay, so let's walk it through. Now, we want to be able to ping from left to right. But the thing is, with a ping, that's actually two-way communications because a successful ping is an ICMP echo request, which will go from left through the CX devices to right and then it will be the response coming back here, okay? So if we walk it through, um, if we're pinging from 192.168.150.101 over to 192.168.152.101, this is the first segment that we need to traverse. So how does the Ubuntu server know how to get over to the 192.168.151 subnet? Well, it doesn't really. It just has a default route for everything that's not directly connected to it. It will send it to its default gateway. So the default gateway is this dot two five four, and that is our eighty three twenty dash one. So the traffic will be able to hit our first CX device, but that's when we hit a problem because the CX device and any routing device only knows about the subnets that it's directly connected to unless you've got static routes or unless you've got a routing protocol running. That's essentially what this is all about. So a layer three device looks at the interfaces, looks the, at the layer three ports and the subnets that are configured on it. That's its view of the world unless you give it essentially a map to the wider world by routing protocols, by static routes. So in this situation, the 8320-1 doesn't know about the 192.168.152.0 slash 24. We need to give it that map. Essentially, we need to give it the route and that is going to be a static route. Okay, so at that point then, this CX device over here would know the the 152 subnet is in is via its neighbor across this subnet. That's what we're going to configure. So the packet would be able to get this far and then the 8320-2 because it's got an interface on that subnet, it knows about the destination IP address. It will have uh, it can ARP for it if it uh, doesn't already know the layer 2 and then we will have comms in one direction. So let's work it back through then. The Ubuntu, so the server will swap the source and the destination from the received ICMP request to create the response. It will essentially, the destination will be the source of the request. That's where it sends it back onto. So we're going back to 192.168.150.101. That isn't a known subnet. There isn't a layer three interface on the Ubuntu server that's in that subnet. So it will send it to its default gateway, which is down on the CX device. Then we have that problem again. The A320-2 doesn't know about the 192.168.150 subnet. So it needs a route. That's what we're going to configure. And that means that 
once that's configured correctly, it will be able to forward on to its neighbor across the slash 30. And then again, because the 8320-1 has a layer three interface, in that subnet it knows it will be able to what where it would already have it in its ARP cache because it had heard with the request the traffic coming in to it already um, so it will know how to respond and forward on the traffic to the final destination of 101 so we have success that's the steps that the packet's going to take. That's the walkthrough. So let's jump over to the CLI of the CX devices and let's get that configured and get end-to-end -end connectivity working again. Here's my demo setup, very similar to my previous videos. Top left, we have the A320-1, dash two is top right. Bottom left is the Ubuntu service, the 1804 that we're gonna do the pings from. And then bottom right, we've got a network diagram here so we can follow along, see where the ping is getting to. I've already configured the interfaces so that the network is set up like this, but the layer three connectivity has not been added. The static routes haven't been added yet so that you're not just watching me configure IP addresses. A quick run through. This interface here, 1 slash 1 slash 2, is connected to the Ubuntu server. I've got an interface VLAN in VLAN 150, which is acting as the default gateway. The interconnected interface, so this 1 slash 1 slash 1 across here, the slash 30 is a native layer 3 port. If we jump over to the dash 2, the dash 2, the 1 slash 1 slash 1 is here. That's, in the, that's the other end of the slash 30. And I have connected to the destination Ubuntu server. I have this 1 slash 1 slash 2. And that's in VLAN 152, which has a layer 3 interface VLAN 152 with the IP address acting as the default gateway. So let's start doing our pings then. Um, can the Ubuntu server 18.04 ping end to end? Let's just dive straight into it. So it's 1... 92.168.152.101. Okay, so we cannot, and we're getting a message from our default gateway that the destination is unreachable. So that's a bit of a spoiler for the next one I wanted to do. Can the Ubuntu server ping its default gateway? Yes, it can. Okay, so as we step through, we know on the path of the packet that we can get from here to here. Do you think that we will be able to ping in this subnet? Will we, we be able to ping 192.168.151.1? Let's give that a go. So ping 151.1. And that is successful. Now the reason for that is going back to that remark I made about thinking like the router. Try to see each step in the path when you're troubleshooting routing from the point of view of the local device. So the Ubuntu server can ping this interface. And the reason being that the Ubuntu server has a default gateway. So anything that it doesn't have a logical interface in that subnet, it sends to its default gateway. Okay, so the default gateway is the 8320-1. Now the routing is from the point of view of the CX device once it's received that packet. So the Ubuntu server doesn't know anything about this subnet, but the CX device does because it has an interface configured in that subnet. And you can see that here. And what that means is that the CX device will be able to act as a gateway between these two subnets from the 150 subnet to the 151 subnet and it will be able to route that traffic from the dot one back. So that's why our ping is successful. But what if we wanted to ping the other end of that link? Would that be successful? Well, no, it's not. And the reason being isn't that the CX device, the dash one doesn't know about the subnet or the, the destination or the source subnet, it's that the traffic will be hitting the 8320-2, okay? And then from that device's point of view, that device doesn't know about this subnet. So we can look at its routing table. Let's clear that. 
let's come actually what I'll do let's compare the routing tables so show IP route on dash one and show IP route on dash two what we have is the subnets and we have any specific interfaces in those subnets show up in the routing table so here we have from dash one's point of view 192.168.150 the slash 24 is known via its interface vlan 150 that's this one we're connected to and we know about this subnet here the 151 via the physical interface one slash one slash one notice that we don't know anything about the 192.168.152 because we don't have an interface this device does not have an interface in there and we don't have a routing protocol or any static routes running and then conversely the dash 2 doesn't know anything about the 192.168.150 it knows about 151 it knows about 152 because of the connected interfaces of course but it doesn't know about 150 so that's what we need to rectify and that's why we can only get from the ubuntu server down to this interface we can't get the traffic will be sent to the 8320-2 but it cannot respond it doesn't know how to send the icmp echo response right let's fix that then and i should mention that all of this is in the default vrf so you can have multiple vrfs on this device but all interfaces unless you specify that they should be in a different vrf they will default to the default vrf and that's what we're seeing here all of the front panel ports other than the out of band interface which will be in vrf management i've covered that in previous videos they will all be so one slash one slash one to one slash one slash 48 unless you specifically configure a different vrf they're all going to be in the vrf default which you can see here and if you do a show ip route that will show you the default vrf by default okay so let's go ahead and start fixing this we want to go into conf and we need to do a ip route and we are going to route from the dash one over to this subnet we need to know about well it's not the vlan it's the 192.168.152 slash 24 that we need to know about so let's configure that zero slash 24 that and you can either put the outgoing interface or the next top ip address i'm going to put the next top ip address which will be from dash one's point of view it will be dash two's 151 ip address so dot two so that will be one dot two done okay now on the other end then so at this point well, I'll show you. Let's come out of there. Show IP route. And now you can see, so we've got 150, we've got 151, and we have 152 known via a static. And the next top IP address is this that I have configured. So now we need to do the reverse, essentially, on dash two. That will be IP route. six eight and which subnet is it it's going to be this subnet the 150 that we're not connected to on dash two remember everything from the point of view of the local device slash is a slash 24 okay and essentially yeah it's like a, a mirror image of what we've just done so we are going to use 151.1 to get back 151.1 into that exit out of there show ip route and you can do a specific subnet so 151 so if we go 151 from dash two oh incorrect there you go do it properly 151 slash 30 we're connected to that via the physical interface and now for the new subnet if i get it right there we are known via 151 it's a static so now the cx device here knows about the, the directly connected subnets and it knows about the remote subnets and vice versa dash 2 knows about these two subnets and it knows about this subnet so everything should be good to ping fingers crossed
Here we go then. So we're pinging 192.168.152.101. Bang. And there it's working. So we're traversing the network at this point from the Ubuntu server here using the static routes to get to the 152 subnet from the CX device here, hitting the Aruba device that will forward on to the Ubuntu 1910 server. The echo response will use the default gateway and then the Aruba 8320-2 will use its static route to get to the ultimate destination, which is in the 150 subnet. It will use that static pointing to its neighbor, hits there, and then the Aruba device dash one knows about the 150 subnet because it's directly connected. And then we have end-to-end -end connectivity. Okay, so that's it for this episode of my series about Aruba AOS CX basics. So the actual actions that I took, just adding a couple of static routes, was very basic. But what we were doing there is delving into how to troubleshoot layer three. And so essentially we were going into like how does layer three routing work? You really have to understand those fundamentals before you start moving on to applying routing protocols in the idea in an ideal world that's how things would work so many times when i used to have to do layer 3 troubleshooting to earn my living in operations just taking it back to the basics thinking from the point of view of the router is fundamental to working out connectivity problems and routing problems so with those basics under our belt, well understood, we can now move on to some more advanced layer three, some more advanced routing by implementing routing protocols. And in a future video, I'm going to start looking at different VRFs and fun stuff like that. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Joe Neville and goodbye.